Hello and welcome to today's video on how the examiner wants you to fail question 5, the narrative and descriptive question at the end of paper 1. Now you might think it's impossible for the examiner to help you fail that after all you can either write a story or you can't or you're either good at writing description or you can't and uh, what's the examiner got to do with it? Well you will be surprised to find out that there are five ways the examiner has designed this question to help you fail. The first way is that they present it as the last question. So, you know, you've been in the exam, you've been writing away like crazy. Uh, being 15 or 16, it's very common for you to say, oh, my hand hurts. And although I take the mickey out of that, it's true, you will feel this discomfort. Um, and uh, it's worth 50% of the whole marks of the exam. So imagine leaving that till the end of the exam when you're already exhausted physically and mentally. Um, it is a lunacy to do this question last. Uh, so if they wanted you to do well, they would make that question one. But they don't, because they need students to fail, as you'll know from my previous videos. Okay, well, the second way they help you fail is by giving you a picture. Now, the examiner actually thinks, I believe, that this will help students succeed because they won't sit in the exam not knowing what to write about. Um, you know, they won't daydream. They'll actually have a picture to focus on. And therefore, if they're struggling under pressure, they can simply write about that picture. But that presents a massive problem. You know, look at this picture. What would you write about? Uh, you know, jot three ideas down. I'm shutting up while you do that. Pause the video. Okay, so let me make some predictions. Uh, you probably zoomed in and worked out that these are soldiers. And you've probably decided to write about a war setting. And either they're going towards war or coming away from it. Um, you might have used a bit of imagination and decided that this was a passenger plane um, and therefore these could be mercenaries who were going off to um, be paid to fight against a dictator in another country. But I very much doubt it. You will have picked something predictable um, and you will describe what you see in the picture. Well, that's great. It gives you something to write about. But every other student in the country has the same picture and will be prompted to write about the same stuff. Therefore, it's much harder for you to get top marks because your writing will be similar to so many other students. Now, the question asks you only to write something suggested by the picture. Uh, so you don't have to think about war. You might write about holidays. Um, you know, these don't have to be soldiers. These can just be people going away on holiday. Um, this could be a private jet and they're going to the most remote places in the world um, uh, to admire the natural beauty. Or you might look at it and think, oh, this red sky reminds me of Mars. This could be a Martian exploration. Um, you could go anywhere with your picture. doesn't have to be stuck inside what you actually see. Um, you could look at the landscape and think, oh, this is much like a desert. I'm going to write something based in the time of the pharaohs. Uh, but the point is you probably won't do that because you'll be locked into the picture. And here's another way that the examiners are trying to get you to fail, um, especially if you are a boy. Okay, Now this might sound sexist, but the pattern of the new exam uh, from the specimen papers and the one that was sat in June is this. The first paper is full of texts featuring female characters, female authors, and female thoughts. And the second paper includes your kind of argument sort of texts, and these often feature fathers and sons and male characters and male writers. And so the examiners are thinking that this is a fair way um, to address the massive gap between girls and performance, girls and boys' performance in English. So at the minute, that's around 16%. Um, so 16%, sorry, girls get 16% more grades, four and above, than boys do. And, well, why is that? Um, and the examiners are trying to try and uh, 
even that up. But what they've done is actually made it worse. Because in the paper where you're writing about characters, um, the examiners have deliberately put female perspectives, female characters, female writers. Well, why is that a problem? Well, because on the second paper, uh, boys couldn't care less whether they're male characters or female characters, male writers or male um, or female writers. What they're interested in is the argument. Uh, boys love arguing. It's something that they'll excel at. You only have to look at your classroom or your tutor group to know that. And so if paper two was the girls' paper, boys wouldn't care less. They'd be quite happy to have female writers and mothers and daughters in that because they'd have loads to argue about. But in paper one, could most teenage boys get interested in the thoughts of a teenage girl or a young woman? Not so much. Uh, so you're absolutely screwed as, um, as a boy on this paper, uh, potentially. Uh, because it's loaded with things that will interest girls and uh, it won't necessarily make you do worse but because you're marked in comparison to everybody else it will because the girls by definition will be more engaged and much more likely to do better so great news if you're a girl hurrah but if you're a boy it's a bit of a problem and there might be quite a few boys who would have quite a lot to say about this picture because it is deliberately masculine. I've chosen that just to show you what won't happen in the exam. You will get a deliberately female type picture. Uh, well, maybe no, maybe that's going a bit far, but certainly the 2017 paper is deliberately female um, and it's much harder for you to write well um, about it uh, if you are a boy. Uh, you know, I don't think I'm being sexist here. I'm just reflecting um, the way it is and this is one reason why the gap between girls and boys performance in uh, English is so great and why the gap in maths for example is almost zero. Um, it's purely uh, the sexist nature of the exam. Okay the next way that uh, the examiners want you to fail is they give you a story or a description which is similar to the text you read for questions one to four. Uh, and so once again, that means lots of students will be writing about the same sort of thing because they end up basing their story or description on the text that they've just read. And that is another massive reason for not doing questions one to four first, but uh, going um, backwards in this exam, question five first, then question four, then three, two, and finally one. And then the final way they want you to fail is by giving you a world you already know well. Uh, well, what's the problem with that? Well, it encourages you not to use your imagination. It encourages you not to be creative. It encourages you not to take risks. In other words, it encourages you to be a boring writer. Um, and uh, that's a problem, isn't it? Uh, your trick in the exam is therefore uh, to look at the question and think, well, how am I going to make this interesting? Uh, how am I going to make it an entertaining read? How would I make it something I would like to read? Or, if you like, Mr. Sallis would like to read. Make it interesting by going away from the world that you know, um, you know, the everyday real world. Use what you know about fiction or your knowledge of history, um, whatever it is. See my video on how to do question five and uh, have fun with it. Do not be confined by the pictures and tasks that the examiners give you. So I hope you've uh, found that helpful. I uh, hope you've not been offended if you're a girl. Obviously there are plenty of girls who would write brilliantly about masculine subjects and plenty of boys who would write brilliantly about um, female subjects. But I'm not talking about you as an individual. I'm talking about the national picture. Uh, so good luck with your revision. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to know more. And uh, thank you very much for watching.